Assalamu alaikum guys, my name is Ashley, welcome to my channel. So, I thought that this was like the best time to tell my story of how I reverted to Islam. I've always been obsessed with watching these videos, I think they're fascinating. I just love to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has literally guided people for thousands and thousands and thousands of years from all different places in the world. Like I watch YouTube videos sometimes where people literally live in like a town of 10 people and somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided them and it's just so beautiful to me. Okay, so all of this is gonna be great but we have to start back to the very beginning to when I was a child and how I grew up. So my parents were always identifying as Christian and Protestant Christian in specific and I don't really know what that even means to be quite honest. Uh, we never went to church. Holidays like Christmas were for gift giving and spending time with family. Easter was for hunting eggs. It was never anything to do with Jesus or anything religious, but my parents and I were always and have always been like spiritual and we always knew that there was a creator. And for me, it has never been a question whether there was a creator. I remember growing up as a kid looking at leaves and you know, animals and you just look at how complex everything is and how everything literally works together to literally just be so perfect. And how if you take one thing away from that, it messes up something else. And just the thought of that to me, really, since I was a kid, I always believed that there had to have been something that created everything. So I never questioned whether or not there was a creator. So from there, I kind of was like, okay, well, we know that we're Christian. I know that I believe in God, but I just had some questions that didn't quite make sense to me. And this was probably around high school time that I started hanging out with a friend who became pretty Christian one summer. And she just started really reading her Bible and then she got married and then she really got into it. And I was kind of like, okay, uh, let me ask her some questions. And then I've asked some other people over the time and I just kind of was like, I don't really understand the Trinity. Can you explain that to me? And every single person that I ever asked to explain the Trinity to me could not explain it. And they would always say the same thing. It's complicated. Even Christians have a hard time understanding it. And I'll do my best to explain it to you. And that to me just was like a huge red flag because I'm like, if someone can't explain their religion to me and why they believe what they believe, and if, it, if, if they explain it to me and I still am just like, that doesn't make sense or I really don't get that, that to me is like a huge red flag because to me, God is someone who would want you to come to him. You know, God is someone who invites you and who guides you and it shouldn't be complicated and I don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it complicated to come to him. And so I just had like a huge issue with that. I was like, the Trinity just doesn't make sense to me. I don't get how three equals one. Like, please just help me out with some more information. So I didn't give up on Christianity. But at this point, I was kind of like, this just doesn't feel like something that I believe in. But honestly, I didn't really know any religion. I was still in high school. We never had any like classes on religion or anything like that. So I was just kind of like, mm, I'm just like not there. And I kind of started leaning towards just like spirituality and just how I connected with earth and how I connected with people and how like my mood was and just things like that. That to me became kind of my religion, if you will. Like I just based things off of that and I knew that I shouldn't kill and all of those fundamentals, right? And I knew I shouldn't steal and I knew I shouldn't be mean to people or hurt people or whatever it is. Okay, so fast forward, I have now graduated high school. I am now off to university and I'm walking around campus one day and I meet my first Muslim. And uh, he later on became my boyfriend, which now looking back on it, I know that that's not okay. Um, and let's just say that he was not the prime example for me of what I should, of what Islam should be. Basically, there was no praying except for Joma prayers and there was drinking and partying and stuff like that which may God forgive him and I obviously will not say his name because I do not want to shame him or embarrass him. Um, but there was just, you know, it wasn't the prime example. But we became boyfriend and girlfriend nonetheless because I had absolutely no idea what was supposed to be happening. And one day when it was uh, Juma prayer, him and his friends were heading to the mosque and we only have one masjid in this entire city that I live in. And it's a pretty big city, but we only have one. 
and it's about 30 minutes away from where our college was. And they were about to head out and then they realized, oh, we're not gonna make it. It's, we're gonna be like at least 20 minutes late. It's not worth going. So they basically just congregated in our apartment and started doing their Juma prayer there. Now, the guy who was leading it, when he said, Allahu Akbar, I was hooked. I was like, what is this? This is incredible. Like, new language. I've always been fascinated with language, so that's probably what caught me at first, is like, whoa, this is a new language that I could learn. And it was just fascinating. And then he says, Allahu Akbar, and he goes into Sujood, and I'm just like hooked. I couldn't look away. I was just like, this is fascinating. I am so... I'm into this. I love it. It's awesome. This is how God should be worshipped. And it just clicked right then that like, this is pretty cool and I need to pursue this. So a couple days later, I googled like, what do Muslims say in prayer? And I wrote it all down. I tried to memorize the transliteration of all of it. And I was just kind of like fascinated. And I probably stuck with it for like a couple weeks or however long. And then I started partying again with like my boyfriend and friends from high school and college and wherever else. And it kind of just like got put on the back burner. So fast forward, uh, I kind of just lose interest in it. And then eventually that boyfriend and I break up and I'm kind of just like back to square one, still in the same situation where I'm like, obviously I've been exposed to this religion, but I'm not really pursuing it. And it's just kind of like this weird spot to be in. And then fast forward, I'm still at university and I meet my best, best friend in the whole world. His name is Abdul. And my husband and I still turn to him for information on Islam all of the time. And it's just like an absolutely amazing relationship for the sake of Allah. And I meet him, I meet his brother, and I meet his two roommates who are all from Saudi Arabia. They're all Muslim and they are more so almost perfect, the example that you need for Islam and what a Muslim should be. And they are very, very knowledgeable. And alhamdulillah, I met them because beautiful people. So I start talking to Abdul about Islam and I start getting arrogant one day and we're sitting uh, in the living room and I'm being arrogant. I'm asking all of these questions, like trying to almost disprove Islam and trying to just, I knew that I wasn't defending Christianity, but I, I, I knew that that wasn't something I wanted. I just knew I was not a Christian, but I just was like trying to disprove it because if I'm going to believe in it, I'm going to ask you all of the questions that I need answered. And if you can't answer them, I'm obviously not going to become part of your religion. I'm, it's just not going to happen. And so every single question I asked, there was an answer. And it wasn't just there's an answer to give you an answer. It's an answer that makes total and complete sense. And I was like, wow, this is in, this is incredible. Like, I just can't even believe that you have all of the answers in your religion. And so I asked about Jesus. I asked about the Trinity. I asked about all of this and just every single thing had an answer. So I was like, wow, this is incredible. And honestly, I remember there was this moment we were talking and Abdul said something and I swear it was literally like, imagine you're doing a thousand piece puzzle and you can't find the last piece and it's you're looking around for it and you just can't find it anywhere and you've been searching for it for so long and you need that piece to feel complete and someone hands you that piece to your puzzle that very last piece and you put that piece in the puzzle and all of a sudden it's complete it's beautiful everything is incredible that was islam literally there was no question in my heart that that was what i was going to believe in that I believe that there is one God and that God is Allah and that I believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. May peace and blessings be upon him. I just knew it. Like it felt like it was part of me. It felt like it had always been a part of me and that it was just like, I now knew what it was, if that makes any sense. So I'm the kind of person and probably this is shaitan whispering to me, but I was like, well, I need to learn everything about this religion. I need to be perfect. Like now that I believe it, I need to be perfect. And I can't take my shahada until I'm literally like perfect at prayer until I know every single aspect, all of the stories of the prophets, all of everything about this religion, the holidays, everything. I was like, there's no way that I'm going to take shahada until I literally learn all of this because in the back of my mind, I was like, well, what if I find something that I don't believe in? But there was no question that Islam was the religion for me. And so I 
am speaking to Abdul one day and I'm just like, I just don't feel like I can accept it yet. I still need to learn stuff. Like there's so many things I do. And he just hit me with what if you die before you take Shahada? What if you believe it, but you die and you never took Shahada? And it hit me so hard and it hit me and I got this big lump in my throat and I felt nauseous and I just couldn't imagine if I died and I didn't take Shahada. I could not imagine it. And literally the next week we went to Juma prayer. We told the Imam that uh, I wanted to take my Shahada and it actually worked out that I had two friends who also wanted to take Shahada, which I don't speak to them anymore. I don't know why. Um, but they took Shahada with me. So it was three sisters that all took it together on December 14th of 2014. So I have been Muslim almost seven years now. And Alhamdulillah, it, it's just literally the best decision I ever made. Like I said, it's like, it's like once I knew what it, the word was to describe it, I swear it was like, that is what I have felt my whole life. It felt just like, it felt just like clarity like this was everything that I was missing, that this is, this is what it's called, that feeling in my heart, that Iman, that, that feeling of just love for your creator and fascination with his creation. This has a name and it's Islam. And I just, I can't believe that I found it, you know, and that God guided me to it and that, you know, Allah had mercy on me and exposed me to it and put those people, each person, so perfect into my life even to this day every person serves a purpose to you and you serve a purpose to every person in their journey and it's just incredible subhanallah it is just incredible so took my shahada everything's fine i'm so excited i'm crying the sisters are hugging me and everyone's shouting takbir and it's just amazing and then it's just like a reality of like wow I've just accepted an entire religion. And honestly, I know a lot of reverts feel this, but you have that and then you just kind of like, maybe don't have the community or you maybe don't have the people. And that's kind of what happened to me. So I still had Abdul, but they were graduating. And so they were gonna go back home to Saudi Arabia and I didn't know a single Muslim. And our masjid is only open for Juma prayers. It's always been like that. And it makes me so incredibly sad. And I wish that they were open. And I don't know why they're not open for every single prayer. But they're only open for Juma. And so literally it's like no community whatsoever. It's such a small portion of Muslims in this country or in the city. And it just kind of felt like when Abdul and his friends went home, I lost the light and that community. And it just, it was really hard for me. And I struggled really hard with my religion at that point because I was like, this is all new. I don't know anything. I don't know the questions I'm supposed to be asking. I need to get some books. Excuse me. I need to focus on what I need to be focused on, but I don't know what I need to focus on. So that is like my biggest encouragement is if you're thinking about reverting to Islam, make sure that you have books that will identify things that you don't even know that you need to know about and if you can really immerse yourself in a mosque that you have next to you or resources that you have and the biggest the biggest help that I have had since becoming Muslim is Yaqeen Institute and Imam Omar Suleiman oh may Allah reward him genital for those because literally that entire channel is life-changing and you just learn an immense amount of knowledge every time you watch a video from them. So I will link their channel down below in the comments just because they're incredible. So now that I'm Muslim, now that I'm feeling a little bit lost because my only Muslim friends have gone back home, I start to fall off a little bit and I kind of just like don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And so that's just how it's been, right? I'm just like, okay, well, I know that I believe this. I know that I'm praying. I know that I need to do all this stuff. But it just got lonely. It just got really, really lonely. And so fast forward, I meet my husband. We are just happily married. We have three beautiful children. My youngest is now two months old, alhamdulillah. And I still crave that community. And that is why I started this channel because I want some sort of community. I want to eventually in my life, God willing, move to a place where there are other Muslims in, in abundance. 
But if I can create this community here to talk about things that people want to talk about and to be a source of connection, because maybe you're lonely as well, that's why I'm creating this channel. And if you have any questions about Islam or anything like that, I will do my best to answer them. And if I can't find the answers, I will make sure to guide you to someone who can give you those answers because it's not a decision to take lightly because you're entering into an entirely new lifestyle and you're entering into, for a lot of people, a very unfamiliar lifestyle. And so it's just, I don't know. I just don't even understand how I am so lucky that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided me. I just can't, every single day I think about it, I'm just like, wow, wow. Like I never would have thought that I would be Muslim. I never would have thought that. And here I am, subhanAllah, here I am. So that is pretty much it for my story. And here I am coming up on seven years. Has every single day been perfect? No, no. I'd be lying if every single day has been perfect. Not questioning my religion, but myself, struggling with yourself. It's struggle, it's work. The shaitan are real. They can really whisper and they are patient. They are very patient. And just, just know that the power of prayer is so strong. Allah wants to answer your prayers. Allah wants to give you things. He wants you to be grateful and he wants you to just come to him. And if you do that, inshallah, Allah will answer you. Allah will give you what you want. And may Allah reward all of us and answer all of our duas.